So C. Weidman on the Tesla Motors subreddit said, looking through the data returned from the API, I see there's now evidence of upcoming features for integrating power walls and car charging, as Elon mentioned. This appears to be support for preventing car charging from draining the batteries when the grid is down and maybe allow the car to absorb surplus solar energy. So this is basically in regards to a guy looking through the code of the API of the power wall and seeing new stuff that's been added to the code. So basically this is directly uh, linked to what uh, Eric was asking back in May. What was he asking? He was saying to Elon, you know, hey, if I lose power, suddenly uh, I'm gonna be stuck using these batteries to power my entire house and it really sucks if, you know, six kilowatts of that is going straight into my car battery. Oh, right, that you've left plugged in overnight. Right, and so like you're asleep in bed, it's, you know, one o'clock in the morning, you lose power, right? And basically your car is gonna just suck up all the power from your power walls, leaving you in the morning with no power to cook breakfast or do whatever. So basically C. Weidman has found that there's a code in here that's gonna take care of that? Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I think that that's really cool. And again, this is why it's awesome to have computers be in charge of all of these different devices. All right, so to bring you some more news on the Australian bushfires and subsequent floods, um, you know, Zach and I have never even been to Australia. Um, we don't know anything about the politics of Australia. So if we were to try and cover it, it would be pretty tough yeah. um, because it's literally on the other side of the world. So luckily we have our friend Chris V from Australia who covered it for us. Thank you, Zach and Jesse. And also a big thank you to the Now You Know community who through your kind generosity, plus well, many others from Australia and well, around the world have contributed to the Front Cup for Fires fundraiser more than $10,000. This money will be donated to the New South Wales Real Fire Service and well, the response around the world has been tremendous with many given to the likes of the Red Cross as well as actual animal welfare agencies and this will go a long way to help not only the affected survivors but also to help rebuild the communities in which they live and also the habitats of the animals affected by these devastating fires. I last reported to you about the fires over a month ago and well currently more than 40 are still burning in Victoria, New South Wales, the Australian Capital Territory and well thankfully none are out of control at present. To date more than 11 million hectares or 110,000 kilometres of bush, parks and towns have been razed. That's roughly the size of England or maybe Austria and Switzerland combined or even the state of Pennsylvania. An estimated 1 billion animals have been injured or perished. And sadly, 33 people have been killed, including five firefighters, three of whom came from America. Now, I should note that in Australia, we are quite used to bushfires or wildfires as you know them in America. Typically, they would start in November or December and run through the late part of February in a pattern that starts up north and then concludes in the southern states like Tasmania. But this season has been very different with the nation experiencing fires at the same time. This interactive map shows fires from September 2019 to January 31st. And as you can see, no part of Australia has been untouched. During the height of these fires, our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, he's like the president equivalent in America, went on holiday. Yes, a holiday. To Hawaii, no less. Why? Well, because as he put it, fires are managed by state and territory governments, not by him or the federal government. So, what turned out to be a truly regretful moment he went and had his Mai Tai on the beach whilst the country burned, people and animals died. On this short segment, I'm going to illustrate our country's highlights and lowlights when it comes to climate action and these fires because, well, as you'll soon learn, it's been a long lead up to this event. Back in 1992, Australia signaled its intentions to join the Kyoto Protocol Agreement. Fast forward to 2007, yeah, that's like 15 years later, we finally signed up to it. What was the delay? Well, in Australia, much like most of the world, we had this cycle of either the Labor Party, more like pro-environment, just a little, and the Liberal Party, very much in favor of fossil fuel industries. And between the both of them, those stalled on the Kyoto Protocol because, well, as a Liberal government in charge of the nation at one, t at one point said, to do so was counter to the nation's interest. Ironic, right? 
Around the same time, an important white paper commissioned by the then Labour Party in opposition asked economist Ross Garneau to examine the impact of climate change on the Australian economy and his recommendations around medium to long term policies to improve the prospects of sustainable prosperity. Published in 2008, it's scary how an economist predicted that increasing bushfires, higher temperatures, droughts, and longer seasons would not only have a massive economic impact if we fail to act on climate change, but also, in equal measure, wreak disastrous impact on our wildlife. Um, this year's fire insurance bill has already surpassed $2 billion. In the meantime, to the credit of various governments at federal and state or territory levels, we saw like a carbon tax introduced, emission trading schemes, renewable energy targets, CO2 reduction strategies, and the signing up to the Paris Climate Agreement. Great stuff. Unfortunately, as governments change, so too our policies, and well, they're either rebranded or killed off altogether. So here we are in 2020, having witnessed the greatest bushfire season the country has ever seen, and we have a prime minister who's very much in the climate denier camp, swayed by lobby groups, Murdoch media, and well, members of his own cabinet who openly dispute climate change. Those who maybe support coal and gas, or maybe are just passionate, have a real passionate dislike for wind turbines, or even want the introduction of nuclear power into Australia. Additionally, this current government wants to fudge about our CO2 emissions in order to meet the Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah, how? Well, they're going to take the Kyoto Protocol CO2 savings and apply them to the Paris total. Hmm, a practice that's banned in Europe and will cast real doubt on our ability to reach these goals. And to think that Australia is the second highest emitter of CO2 per person in the world. I can't stress this enough. A lot of Australians are hurting right now. The emotional trauma is palpable. People are angry, upset, and well, mentally in a space that I couldn't even begin to fathom. They're furious at our politicians who, in the face of like specialist reports from multiple scientific bodies, they've been using lines like, well, this isn't the time for politics or thoughts and prayers, when it's been going for five straight months. So thankfully, public sentiment on climate change and the way in which managed fires might also have changed. I must stress that we do have some awesome politicians from both sides of politics, plus big business and everyday mum and dads who support action on climate change. Australia's renewable energy mix from solar, wind and hydro is at about 23.5% and will hopefully grow to about 35% in the next two years. The Australian Capital Territory, that's like the powerhouse of Australian politics by the way, shifted to 100% renewable power this year. And well, that's the size of Luxembourg, yeah. We have one of the world's largest batteries keeping the lights on and lowering our electricity prices, and more exciting technologies in the pipeline like the Sun Cable Project connecting Northern Australia with Singapore with a 10,000 megawatt solar array and a 22 gigawatt hour Tesla mega pack, or mega packs rather. There is hope for us yet, and again, thanks Zach, Jesse, and viewers, now you know. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you guys should go check out his YouTube channel, it's fantastic, we'll put the link down below. Thanks so much for watching this Now You Know clip. Head over to Now You Know channel for full episodes of Tesla Time News and in depth. And if you want to treat yourself and your family to something amazing, check this out. Jesse and I have been enjoying Masterclass, where we've been learning all sorts of fun topics from the masters themselves. Yeah, business leadership skills from Bob Iger. Yeah, that Bob Iger. Jazz from Herbie Hancock. Basketball from Steph Curry. Yeah, that Steph Curry and so many more. Click the link down below to support our channel and experience what it's like to learn from the masters at Masterclass.